give you worship, we give you adoration. A gentleman asked me a very powerful question this morning, and it puts me on a position to explain certain things. I want to come out a bit from my deliverance series, but I want to do the similar, uh, I want to use the same way, basically it's not entirely coming out of it, but to chip this one in. He asked me what will happen after rapture. So, Brother Gabriel, what will happen after rapture? Basically, before I'll go on what will happen after rapture, we need to know what rapture is. Rapture is a situation where Christians, born again believers, will be taken out of this world with a twinkle of an eye where the saints will be taken out of this world and will be received by Jesus Christ and his host of angels in the air. For what reason is God going to do that? I think I have thought that, but I want to give you a recap, as a quick recap. Number one reason that God is going to do that, that Jesus promised us in John chapter 14, Verse number 1 to 3, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27, that he is going to prepare a place for the church, which he's called as his bride or his wife. And he would take them into where he is. He want his wife to be there. He want his saints. He want his beloved. He want his born servants to be where he is. You want them to enjoy what he enjoys because Christianity is exchange. Are we giving who we are to Christ and Christ giving who he is to us? It's like a marriage relationship, exchange, partnership, covenant. So Jesus desire that you and me will be where he is. So that is number one reason why rapture is necessary number two to give the resurrection of death to christians from among these wicked people on earth whenever a person dies absent in the physical realm he enters into a spiritual realm man consists of physical and spiritual so when this body goes through the process of decay decompose or when the soul comes out of this flesh, the spirit of man lives forever, which is the soul. So the soul will go to a place and enjoy eternal life. But Jesus Christ valued our physical body so much so well. That is why he doesn't want you to contaminate the physical body. Because he wants to take this body also out of this earth. He doesn't want your body and my body to go through a decay. Philippians chapter 3 verse 11 talks about that. Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 to 6 talks about the resurrection of the dead. Mm -hmm. And also 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 14, 16 and 17 express that. Number three reason why rapture is necessary is to take the saints to heaven to live in the new Jerusalem and receive their rewards. Mm. Everything that we are performing for the Lord, Christianity is an act of performing based upon our loyalty or our love for Christ. We are willing to do whatsoever he tells us to do. And every act of obedience, there is a reward. As we, most of us, are parents, anytime that our children do something that are very good to us, we want to reward them. We want to reward them. I reward my girls whenever they, are, they do what, what is good. I reward them every now and then. I buy them things. That is how God loves us. Even if we wicked men know how to reward our children, how much more do you think that our Heavenly Father will not reward us? So He wants to take us to heaven for us to receive our reward. Reward for what? Reward for saying no to sin. 
Reward for stopping fornication. Reward for stopping covetousness. Stopping lies. What? God going to reward me for that? Oh, yes. He loves us so much that everything, every act of obedience, every act of righteousness and holiness, God is going to reward us. What do you want more if you don't want this one? <laughs> he loves you so much. It's amazing, isn't it? So this one also is written in the same book of First Thessalonians chapter number 4. And um, also chapter number 3, verse 13, John 14. He said, where I am, I want you to be there also. He wants to reward us. And... Um, I think 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35 to 58, and Philippians chapter 3, verse 21, talks about that. That the Lord wants to take us into a place of glory and uh, reward us of things that we have done in the flesh. That we will be rewarded in heaven. God wants to reward you and me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So number five. Is Christ to present. Christ to present us before God. He wants to present us. As a church without wrinkles and without blemish. He wants to present us as a token of his love. Number five, reason. Number six, to make saints whole in body, soul, and spirit. The reason of resurrection is that my body will join my spirit and my soul. So that our joy will be full. As of now, there are saints in heaven. When they died and they were buried, their dead bodies are still here on earth. And the Lord doesn't want our body to remain here. So he wanted to take our body out of this place and we will share his glorious body. We will share the resurrection body. When Jesus resurrected from the earth, according to the gospel, as Matthew, Mark, and Luke and John wrote for us, he received a resurrected body. So he wants to honor us with the same resurrection body, that we will taste the resurrection body. And that he will present as a God. That is um, John 14, Jude, verse 24, Revelation 19, 1 to 10 talks about that. And to make the saints whole in body is uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and Philippians 3, 21. And to cause us to receive the first fruits of the early and the latter rain. The Lord wants us to receive the first root fruits. So there are so many factors. I think the number eight reason is to call the saints to escape the great tribulation. That is where I think there are about 10, 12 reasons. I want to give a few today. To cause the saints to escape the great tribulation. There are so many schools of thoughts, people having different version and different understanding and different presentation of the gospel. I don't know why they assume that Christians will go to the great tribulation. Christian might go through tribulations, but not a great tribulation. Because no born again believer will be allowed to go through that pains that Jesus had already go through. While Jesus suffered for us on the cross, if we become obedient to him, we will not go through that. He wouldn't allow us to go through that. Why will he allow us to suffer that? He won't. Why? Because when you and me become obedient to God, he loves us. Whom among us is so wicked that you will allow your children to sleep in your best enemy's house? Somebody who wish you dead. Do you want to handle your children to that person for even only two hours? I don't think even you would do that. How much more do you think that God would do that? He wouldn't do that. So the law will call the saint to escape the great tribulation. According to Revelation chapter number 6, verse 1 to 19, 
and then verse 21. And also the first Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. Luke chapter 21, verse 36. Revelation chapter number 4, verse 1. That Christians will not go through the great tribulation. Christian might go through tribulation, but not the great tribulation. So whenever you hear pastors or preachers who are saying all this, then let us be very careful. They might, they are wrong, not they might be. Why? My personal experience of the great tribulation was very horrible. I've had different types of tribulations, great tribulation. When the rapture came and I couldn't make it because of sin, because of sin, negligence, sin of disobedience, sin of not paying attention to what God was saying at that particular time. And in those revelations, I couldn't make rapture. And it was very, very horrible. Very, very horrible. Why horrible will it be? It's going to be horrible because at that particular time, the Holy Spirit is left the earth. The church is gone. The true church of Christ will be gone after rapture. So in this series, I'm going to open your understanding that if there is anything that you need to do now, do it now. And stop being rebellious and stop being stubborn. Did you hear that? If there is anything that you and me need to do, I presume that we need to do it now. And we need to stop being stubborn. And we need to stop being rebellious. Because Christians are very stubborn. Some Christians are very stubborn. We have two types of believers on earth now. We have those who have taken the word of God. Every bit of the word of God they are taking is strictly as a face. But there are some who are like, well, I mean, I'm not quite sure of it. They are not fully convinced. And these people belong to Satan. They are 100% the tool that Satan can use. Why? Because they are not saved yet. Their life is not fully saved. One way or the other, Satan can chew them at any time. Yes, the protection of God is upon their lives. God is still covering them. However, they stand in the chance to lose rapture at any time. When rapture comes, such people will not make it. They look warm Christians. They are neither hot nor cold. And the Lord said, I will spit them out of my mouth. Meaning that they will be left behind. These are the Christians who are going to be left behind to go through the great tribulation. Now the question is, would those people be saved? Would those people be saved? That is a very big question. Yes. Some of them can be saved, but not all of them. Why? The point is this. According to the book of Revelation chapter 7 verse 4, it talks about 144,000. The 144,000 are basically only the Jews. So the Lord would set the church out that he will get enough time for the Jews to concentrate on the Jews and give them also the chance to come to heaven. This time, he had just bypassed them. He is not, the Jews are not the focus of Christ now. But the church are the Gentiles. So now Christ is giving the first rites. That's why he said the first shall be last. Mm. The chosen Israel are going to be last. Who are going to be raptured. However, there are still members of Christianity that are going to remain and go through that tribulation. So if some people say the church will go through tribulation, it's half truth. The stubborn church, the rebellious church will go to the tribulation. Yes. They will be dragged out of that pains and that agony. I'll tell you my personal revelation. Another revelation of brethren that have been taken into the spiritual realm 
to witness these things or the Lord opened their eyes to see the life after, the life after rapture. Darling, it's not something that you need to endorse or you must be ready for. So, the Bible says that there will be many people who will come to Christ during the Great Tribulation. Among others are the 144,000 which uh, as uh, Revelation chapter 7 talks about, they are the Jewish believers. Mm -hmm. So the question is, will somebody become born again during that time? Yes, people will be saved. Will Christians be saved? Yes, some Christians who didn't take their Christian life seriously, who never considered this end time teachings warnings, that is warning people to exempt themselves from the wrath to come. Those people who never took that advice carefully, they will go through the pains and the agony and the torture. And the torture that humanity are going to go through, they are breathtaking. That is why we encourage you to move towards the Lord at this end time and uh, be part of Revelation chapter number 20 verse 4 says, Then I saw thrones, and seated on them were those to whom the authority to judge was committed. Also, I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast of his image and had not, had not given themselves to the enemy. So meaning that, there are some Christians who are going to go through uh, assassination. They are going to, their head is going to be chopped off. They're going to go through pains and fire before they will enter heaven. So during that time, there will be death. However, the process of death is going to go slow. If somebody gets cardiac arrest, no cardiac arrest. <laughs> People are not going to get cardiac arrest, heart attack. No, 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 no. People are going to die not out of sickness. But they are going to die out of torture. They are going to die out of torture. So, there is no basic scripture that says that salvation will be stopped during that time. However, you might not get people to preach the gospel because nobody will be there to preach the gospel. That is going to be a very serious time. So, the little gospel that you know, yeah, Meaning that those who rebel against God, those who harden their heart during those times, now they are going to go back to Bible and start believing. They are going to start believing. Yeah? So, uh, those saved during the Great Tribulation are those who had never heard the gospel before the rapture. Who is going to talk to them then during that time? That is not true. That is not true. But those who have heard the gospel, but rebel against the gospel, they will be basically people that have stand a chance, who are going to church, those who are going to church. Yeah. According to Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11 says, The coming of the lawless one is by the active of the Satan with all power, and false signs and wonders, and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing, because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Some people who refuse to love the truth, mm, these are the people that follow the miracle working churches. People who are performing wonders. People who are turning water into wine. People are turning acid into a uh, 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 mineral drink. People are giving you serpent to eat and they call it biscuits. People are endorsing all kinds of idolatry things and you are following them. You refuse to walk in the truth. These people were assigned to go through the great delusion that the Lord was sent according to verse 11. And it will send them a great delusion, deception, that will cause them to bring their senses back to God. So right now, 
You might be struggling with the word of God. You might be resisting and fighting. You will wait. You will wait the first batch. You can't make rapture. But the second one you will go. And you will go through that pains because this time around, the scales on your eyes will fall down. The, uh, the, 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 is it the lamps or whatsoever in your ears will be removed. So your itching ears will no longer be interested in hearing fabrications and lies. But you'll be delighted to know the truth. Why? Because God will send them a strong delusion so that they'll be convinced. Why can't you be convinced now? That is what pains me now. So, God is going to grant a delusion to confirm their unbelief so that they will come and render their heart to Christ and be saved. God will grant those who have hardened their heart toward the gospel before the rapture, God will grant them access into the kingdom of God. And the Antichrist will be deceived many during that time. He is deceiving thousands of people today. We have so many churches which are Antichrist churches. So many churches which are Antichrist churches. Now you may ask me, Brother Gabriel, how can I discover the Antichrist church at a particular moment where we are now? When I was, when the Lord asked me, to go back and talk about the uh, after rapture today, immediately I receive uh, a post from one of my uh, darling co liberals in the Lord, Sister Esther uh, Bambulwanga, which is Brother Mikey's wife. She sends me every now and then what sort of the husband posts. So this is what the brother Mike here, the Lord led him to write today, which is very, very profound. So I was, I was so happy. So wow, thank you, sister, because you confirm what the Lord is dealing with my heart to talk about today. This is what brother Mike here wrote today. Don't follow him. Talking about the Antichrist churches, Antichrist ministry today. Don't follow them. Don't follow him. If he is not preparing you for rapture, then he is preparing you for the great tribulation. Very awesome. If the church that you are going today is not preparing you for rapture, then automatically he is preparing you for great revelation. But the question is, can you stand? Can you stand during that time? Because it's going to be very severe. Very, very severe. According to Jeremiah chapter number 12, verse 10, the brother quoted from there. Brother Micah said, if he always see vision to you, he doesn't preach or teach the written word of God. Don't follow him. If you are in the church that people are always prophesying, you are seeing vision. I see vision. There is somebody listening to me this afternoon. I'm not saying, and I, I'm, I'm, the brother is not saying that those who are seeing vision are all false prophets. No, but this is not a time for vision. <laughs> If somebody should see vision about you, then that vision should be that Jesus is telling you that you are living in sin. Repent. No vision that you are going to buy a car. No vision that you are going to buy a new house. That is not necessary. That's not what God is interested at at this particular moment. Hmm? This is what uh, Apostle Paul said, and I think... Uh, First, second uh, Timothy chapter number three, that people will be willing to hear what their itching ears want them to hear. That the interest of many, the love of many will grow cold and their interest will be established on fabrications. Let me read what brother Mike here wrote today. If he is always not teaching you the ways of God, and he is not directing you to the knowledge of the true word of God, then be very, very careful. If he is selling anointing oil, <laughs> prayer handkerchief, the blood of Jesus in a bottle, 
Don't follow him because he is Gehazi. <laughs> Be careful. Don't follow them. Now, there are so many things which is being presented to the church. Now in Ghana, I was listening to one of these radio presenters that would interview some people and they have brought some dead sea, dead water, there's dead water, sea, dead sea water that will heal people and making miracles and all these things. Dead sea salt and all kinds of this rubbish. When you sit down for somebody to build your faith in these things, it takes your faith, it takes your focus from focusing on the lamb who was slain. Jesus did not die. That water, mere water can save a person. Mere water can wash a person's sins away. If those things could perform, why would Jesus come to die? These are demonic things that Christians must be very, very careful. Be careful. I believe in praying for people or praying with people and getting healed. Jesus does it. I believe in a bay placing people faith in the blood of Jesus because Jesus did that in John chapter number 14, 13. He did that. He prayed and gave wine to the disciple to drink as a point of contact as a blood. So if the pastor is agreeing with you on that fact, that is fine. But if the pastor is telling you, go and bring anointing oil and let me pray for you, be careful with that. Be careful. Sorry for that. They're very, very serious. Yeah? So whenever you come to the level where people are taking your attention from Christ and building your faith on fabrications, be careful. There are some who are saying that the microchip is not dangerous. If you might have heard me talking about it, I do apologize. <laughs> My knowledge by then wasn't right. I'm telling you, I'm staying from anything that will cause you to put your faith and your trust in the flesh. At this particular time, avoid everything. You don't know what is what. I know pastors are going about and saying that microchip is not dangerous. Well, what is the reason of them doing that? And where are they, are they putting that microchip? Exactly where the Bible has said that the Antichrist mic is giving. Here, at the back of your hand, or on your forehead, that is where the microchip is going to be given. And that is what it says, 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 it's written. Every person who is not born again, like I said, there are two types of Christians. Those who are totally burning in the things of God, they have given themselves out, and here is written the lamp. Jesus' name is written on my forehead. You can't see physically, but those who have spiritual eyes can see. And it is always sparkling. So long as I read the word of God, so long as I walk in holiness, righteousness, and truth, and obey what God tells me, my righteousness is always blooming like a fire. But those who indulge in themselves in sin, covetousness, stealing, and lying, those things have gone dim. And they are the targets of the enemy. They are not the highest targets. I am one of the highest targets. He's always looking for a way to kill me, but he can't get me. Because I'm secured and protected. And so are you. So are we. All who are daily living our life for God. So let us be very careful. I love what Brother Michael continued to write. Brother Mike wrote this. He said, if he is selling anointing oil... If the pastor asks you to take the microchip into your hand or your head, he is under bewitchment. Don't follow him. <laughs> if the pastor is saying, oh, taking the chip is not bad. Where is it in the Bible? Is it written that there is going to be a chip? Go to the book of Revelation. The Antichrist will give a seal. And those who don't have that seed cannot buy, nor they can sell. You are automatically going to be excluded. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. And also 
First, uh, second Timothy chapter three. The Bible talk about the fact that those who are not living by then, according to the will of God, they cannot buy nor they can sell. Say, for men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boast, pride, blasphemy, disobedient to parent, thankful, unholy, unsanful. These are the qualities of people who have already taken the mark of the beast. Read Second Timothy chapter three. Read it, verse one. Talk about not less than twenty-four types of sins. These are the qualities that promote the sinfulness in the person's life. In the form of this sin, if you are indulging your heart in them, you have already taken the sinfulness unaware. It is already given, but it will become a law. The law of enforcement after the rapture. So any person that tells you the sentences will be given after rapture is a liar. I agree with what my, my brother said, Brahmakia said. He is under bewitchment. I love the term. He is under bewitchment. He has been bewitched. He has been deceived to deceive others. Go away from such ministers. Go away. It doesn't matter. They might be preaching holiness, tab two, tab three, tab ten. Go away. Go the under bewitchment. <laughs> oh, I love what my brother said. If the pastor stop you from speaking in tongues, praying in the Holy Spirit, don't follow him. He is lost. He is untouched with God. So things that will promote you being on fire for the Lord. If you be around any person that is telling you they are antichrist, avoid them. I'm talking about life after rapture. I'm going to take my time and break it. Now you be very careful. I want to bring it into deliverance. Now you'll be taken out of the crutches of the enemy. Satan is doing so many things today that Christians who are not alert, who are not uh, 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 vigilant, who are not sober, according to what Apostle Peter said, be sober, be vigilant, be eye open. Open your eyes in your spiritual realm, not in the physical eyes, spiritual eyes, that you can see what God is seeing, and you can hear what God is telling the church, and you walk with that. Don't follow those liars. Don't follow them, oh. I beg, oh. Uh, hi. You just continue to go to them. <laughs> Sometimes I need to smile because I can't be all that crying every day. I have to cry because it's very painful. Very, very painful. People are being warned every day, yet they don't want to come out. This is what Brother, Paul, Brother uh, Mike here wrote this morning. If the pastor asks you to allow him to anoint your breast <laughs> for healing, <laughs> don't follow him. He is not in the way of truth. Hey! <clears throat> so many things going on. Oh. You allow your pastor to anoint you. Anoint for where? The anointing of God is not in the hands of man. I don't believe in those foolishness. Don't believe the anointing of man. Believe in anointing of the Holy Spirit. Go in your closet. Go in your closet. Fast and seek. What is anointing? Anointing is the backing of God. Anointing is the influence and the backing and the endorsement of God on the righteous persons whenever he stands. When I pray, God answer my prayer. I'm anointed. I consider myself I'm anointed. For the Father, when I explain the word of God, you receive it and you feel that what the brother is saying is true. That is anointing. What kind of anointing do you want? What do you need anointing for? Tell me. Anointing for what? For good marriage? Oh, that one, you don't need anointing. You need to be humble yourself to your husband. <laughs> anointing for money. That one, you need to go and look for a job. What kind of anointing is this? Anointing to fear God? Anointing to sink? You need to turn your voice. You need to live a holy life. So that kind of rubbish. Anointing service. and Anointing for where? 
Oh, my dear. Why are we walking in deception like that? We love sin, covetousness. The love of God has grown cold. Love of worldliness. Love of prestige. Love of things. Oh, my God. That man is anointed. And thousands of people are listening to him. That is not anointing. That is fake hood. At this end time, in the church, that have many people following them. They, that is not anointing. That is not anointing. That is falsehood. That is lying spirit. Those who are anointed, go to Facebook. Yesterday, my brother Michael was having a program. I think the whole weekend. I used to listen, go in and listen a bit because of time. And when you go there, five people are watching his videos. Three people. Come to Brother Gabriel's video. Three, four, five. Go to the other places. Ten, twenty, hundred, fifty, hundred thousand. People are following that. Are we not anointed? Yes, we are. We have the master that is changing life, but nobody likes it. <laughs> because we don't tell lies. We tell truth, and people don't want to hear truth. And for this, God will give them a time for delusion. Mm. That will cause such people to be saved. Let me go back to what brother Michael wrote this morning. I mean, he really blessed me this morning. He said, if a pastor asks you to allow him to anoint your breast, not only your breast, maybe your private parts, I don't know. Maybe your hands, I don't know. You are receiving, oh my God, people are sleeping with people's wives to anoint your private parts. You need an anointing over there. <laughs> hey, what kind of anointing is this? What kind of it? Come into my house. I don't even want a woman to come into my house if my wife is not there. If I don't know that person that she's a born again believer, I can't host any woman in my life. I'm not anointed in front of women. No, 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 no I don't have that anointing. <laughs> you have pastors who have anointed. I don't have weaknesses. I hate sin. That's what I'm saying. I hate that. I don't want to have anything in common with that. So if you, a pastor will invite you into his closet, and you know, oh, don't be dumb. Excuse me for my word, but I, that's my English. I'm sorry for that. Be wise. Be wise, brothers. Don't expose your wife. Some of you can expose your wife. Oh, so I, I know that. My wife is so... I can't remember in Germany. My wife, we said, oh, no, no, you can go and, and, and preach to prostitutes. I said, darling, don't put me into that trouble. Don't put me into that trouble. So long as when I see your nakedness, I am turned on. Any woman that show me her nakedness can turn me on. Please, don't put me in that trouble. If you want to go with me, let, come along. If not, I won't go. <laughs> Jenny, you are laughing. That is true. I need to. We have weaknesses, natural weaknesses. It is that the grace of God that keeps us from doing that. So don't be too superficial and too, too anointed man of God. The devil is a liar. Let me go back and finish what brother Mark here and make a point out of that. He said that if he is patronizing comedian to entertain the members, don't follow him. He is not interested in heaven. Now, pastors are inviting people to come and if they are not raising funds, then they are going to entertain them. If you can't win them, entertain them. Church has become entertainment ground. If he is adding account number to his post or messages on Facebook, if he is always collecting seed offering, profit offering, Message offering, fasting and prayer offering, all forms of offering. Don't follow him, oh, he is Gehazi. <laughs> you know who Gehazi is. Gehazi was a servant of Elisha. When the Naaman came for deliverance, and uh, Nehman, uh, um, Elisha said, I don't want money, take your money away. Gehazi went and said, no, I can't allow this money to go. He ran after this man. He wanted money. And what came after his life? Leprosy. If you are under Gehazi, you are under a curse. Be careful, oh, be careful. The brother is not saying that don't support our holiness teaching. Yes, I offer people who want to support my ministry. I offer them because it's a blessing. I can't deny you because one way, the highest way to build house in heaven is using your substances, your prayer life, your Bible studies life, your witnessing, your gift of God that God has given to you, your money, your money is the highest way to build house in heaven. So if you are in a church and you always listen to the man of God and you pay your money to the wrong people, hey, you are gone. If the, the person that
that you are paying your the minister that you are paying your money into is not a minister of God. You are under curse. Why? Because you are supporting the minister of the devil. You can imagine. Supporting pastors who are promoting abortion, supporting pastors who are promoting masturbation. If you are paying tight to these people, do you think that you are being blessed? You are under curse. You are under curse. You are promoting the kingdom of darkness. So that is not what brother, brother uh, Michael is saying. That if you have a pastor who is asking you to support his ministry. And if the pastor is preaching the truth, if you support the truth, that is how you're supposed to be. That's how you're supposed to be. So those of you, those of you who are supporting my ministry, God bless you. <laughs> we are winning souls for the Lord. We must win souls. There are some friends in India, they send me every day. They send, oh my God, they send me bills. <laughs> We got Bible school there that we are supporting. Got ministry in Nigeria, ministry in Ghana. We have these brothers that they don't have people to support him. Them, yeah. they don't have. They have what? They are just young ministers. Somebody like Brother Michael, somebody like Brother Emmanuel, uh, some Jude, somebody like Brother. Uh, there are a few brothers over there who are preaching holiness. They don't have ministries. I go to work. I've just came from work. Last night after preaching, I went to work. So I've just returned from night shift. So I'm not much more that. But my heart go for these brothers. That so nobody is supporting them. They need to take care of their family. They need to take care of the ministry. And to run ministry in Africa is very difficult. So if God touches your heart, go and bless them. Yes, go and bless them. Go and bless them. Go ahead and do that. And God will bless you. Any minister that you support, God will bless you. God will bless you. If you send me, I will send it to them, by the way. So don't bother. <laughs> so what the brother is saying, if he asking you to divorce your wife or your husband, don't allow him to. He had divorced Jesus already. So we speak against divorce. Bible talk against divorce. So no Christian brother that would divorce his wife under any condition, you are gone. Say, hear it and hear it well. My wife is rebellious. Are you not rebellious, sir? Are you not rebellious? Recently, we were having a Bible study. It's one of my sisters who is uh, saying amen, amen there. <laughs> she said something that fascinated me. She said, if my husband is not submitting to God, how can I submit to her? And that was a powerful message. If the husband is not submitting to God, and you're submitting to that husband, you are submitting to the devil, you are submitting to Antichrist. That husband say, put on earrings. That husband say, when I marry you, you have lipstick. And if you take the lipstick out, I'm going to divorce you. Such husband, sister, if you, if, if you humble yourself to him, he's taking you to her. If he divorces you, there is nothing wrong. Stay pure. I'm not saying that he should divorce you. I pray that he will repent. And come with you alone to heaven because you were not married. You didn't marry him for him to bring you to hell. But you married him for you to bring him to hell. Uh, to heaven, sorry. For you to bring him to heaven. Mm -hmm. So try to educate your wives, your idolatrous wife and your idolatrous husbands who don't want to go to heaven with you. If they don't want to go to heaven with you, don't go to hell with them. Don't go, please. Don't submit to them. So, Bible prohibits forbids is prohibited divorce in christian rate is prohibited so if you have a pastor friend that is telling you your your wife is disobedient your your uh, your, your drug that pastor friend out because he is devil he's devil he's a witch <laughs> oh i will never forget as I, when i was a little boy there was this man that he used to drink and that man was married to his wife and the wife was threatening him, if you continue to drink, I will, I will divorce you. And his friends said, let her go. This, ah, why are you worrying yourself? You have your cocoa farm. If you have maize, you have, if you have corn, you have chicken to come and eat it. I allow, allow her to go. So one time the woman couldn't. She took all her children, three, four, five children. She took them and went because the man had become alcoholic and there was nothing that could change it. And that was the end of that man. That when the woman left, that the man drank until he died. In the evening, they came and boozed together with his friends. And when the day was over, he went into his village, slept with his wife. And this man was sleeping alone. Sometimes he wouldn't eat for three days. So he died out of that. 
Be careful when people are telling you to drop your wife. Any pastor that will tell you, drop your wife is devil. If in the past time, in the last time, if you heard me talking about that, please forgive me, oh, I didn't know. I need to apologize. I need to apologize. If the adventure, I've never said it anywhere, but if the adventure, I've said it, forgive me, oh, we must come and draw people closer to God. What are we talking about? We are talking about life after rapture. Pastors who are indulging you in sin. Pastors who are not telling you to come out of that bondage. They are no good pastors. Every second you spend with them, you are spending the eternity with them in hellfire. Be careful. Be careful. Those who are selling things to you. Those who are praying and adding all kinds of things to you. There is one thing that I believe. If you confess your sin and ask Jesus to forgive you of your sin, power of sin is broken and no sickness can dwell in your heart. If you confess your sin, you don't need anointing oil. If you ask God to forgive you of your sin and turn from your wicked ways, God will also turn away from his plans to destroy your life. God will seize his iron hand from you and bring water into your ground. And he will reign over your life. Are you walking in a very stiff hand with God? Ask yourself, am I walking in disobedience? Ask yourself, are you walking in an any area where you are not submissive to the will of God? Don't run to pastors. Run to Jesus Christ. Run from your sin. Instead of running to ministries, run from your sin and run to Christ. Run to men of God that are teaching the truth. We are not many. We are very few. We are not many at all. But we will tell you the truth. We will tell you the truth that you don't want to hear. We will tell you the truth that will repair you and send you away from hellfire into heaven. Finally, brother, Mike here said, if that pastor made, made you a deacon or a pastor, he says, man, because you donated a huge sum of money to his church. <laughs> if he asks you to be wearing mantle, for protection and he is going about having police and the body guys and, and, and the macho people as a protection then you know that that man is a fake any pastor who is having a body guide is a fake he's a fake minister god bless you brother michael that message is very powerful very very powerful i want you to understand we are using all this material to open your understanding for you to know those who are truth and if you don't turn away from them, and so he preaches good. Yes. In the Garden of Eden, do you know the tree that Adam and Eve ate? The knowledge of good and evil. <laughs> it was mixture. That is very dangerous. They were supposed to eat what is clean, not what is combination. Yesterday, a friend of mine, apparently in Ghana, I hope he's going to listen to this, and that in their church, According to the church, they were having some kind of uh, like uh, all nation day. Church is celebrating all nation day. Church is not celebrating heaven day, but all nation day. So every person should put on a culture whatsoever that any person want to wear. Do you know how far the devil is misleading people? So this gentleman in Ghana puts on skirts, put on a, a cap, have a tie. Because he wants to dress as a Scottish don't you know that Deuteronomy 1 has not a man to put on anything that belongs to a woman? Are you naive? You see where they cause you to err. They won't tell you to do that. And since you have those things in your heart, the day you die, if you don't repent, the day you die, you find yourself dressing like a Scottish. Oh, one time my niece asked me, so bro, uh, uncle, what are you, are you saying about all this Scottish? Darling, in Bible there is no Scottish. There is no Ghana, there is no Naja, there is no Jamaicana, <laughs> there is no J German. In Bible, we have Christians, Christ likeness. So if you are not following pastors who are presenting the nature and the culture of heaven, be careful. Be very, very careful. The devil is a liar. You know, he's dynamic and he is highly intelligent. So this is how he, he uses us to contradict our ways uh, 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 against the will of God. This is the person that I need that puts on. I don't know what other people are wearing on that day. People might be wearing, uh, pinching their nose because it's all called all, all Nation Day. And 
what they've seen people doing, and this is how sinful heart is. You do things that you see people doing. It is my prayer that you live a life ready for rapture. You live a life ready for rapture. I'm going to continue with this series tomorrow, God's willing. I'm going to continue. But it is my prayer that wherever you are living, are you ready for rapture? Have you prepared for rapture? You are a young girl from, I think, Pakistan. A little girl who has been my friend for some time. She came to me this morning and asked me, how are you doing? I said, I'm fine. I said, what about you? She said, she's fine. I went to her profile and she has put, you know, these uh, uh, Pakistanis, they have all kinds of tattoo, that kind of thing that they paint upon their skin. I said, are you ready for rapture? She said, yeah, yeah I'm doing it very well. I said, have I not warned you not to paint your skin? And she have a wet ring. She's so proud of it. You know, there are some of us, we are proud of sin. If you are listening to me and you are following this culture, be careful. Culture that causes you to transgress against the word of God is demonic culture. Demonic culture. The reason why most of us, we are struggling is our culture. Our forefathers used to put on earrings. It's our culture. Now you've moved away from worldly culture into Christian culture. Why don't you practice Christian culture? What culture are you practicing? Where you are practicing is where you're going to be. It is my wish that you practice Christian culture and heavenly culture. What is that culture? Culture of purity, righteousness and truth, holiness from head to toe. Nothing impure, nothing missing, nothing broken can go to heaven. Heaven is a pure ground. Holy place. Angels are holy. Even birds, even plants, everything is holy. Plants are singing over there. The soil in heaven is holy soil. Do you remember in uh, Exodus chapter number 3, when the Lord appeared to Moses, he told Moses to remove his shoes because where he's standing is a holy ground. That's how heaven is. <laughs> it's holy ground. So we can't go there without dirty shoes. What dirty or what dirt is in your in your thoughts? Shake it off. Shake it off. Is there any area that you are being deceived? You work in deception for such a long time. You've been paying money to wrong people. You, you, you've been investing your future in wrong people's hands. I need deliverance. Say, Jesus, deliver my soul from the hands of arm robbers. Deliver my soul from the hands of the Antichrist soldiers who have put on tie, who have put on chains, who have put on clericals and considering themselves as pastors, as bishops, as prophets, those who are sleeping with men to get power, those who are bowing before others to get their authority, those who have mantle that nobody knows what is the inside. Lord, deliver my soul from them. And bring me into the hands of your children. Those who have no qualification. Those who have no beauty. Those who have nothing to desire. But except you. Which they represent. Let my heart be in tune with them. And let me be very close to you O oh God. Help me to come closer to people that will push me. That will draw me closer to you. That my heart will be secure in your hands. Thank you because you love me. In Jesus name. I recommend you to go and listen to these brothers, Brother Michael, Brother um, Samson Jude, Brother Sylvester Anele, Pastor P.P. Crunchy, Pastor Amwa in Ghana, Pastor Christ, which is Heaven Seekers Ministry in Ghana. These are the people I can recommend that my heart is at peace. I can testify. So go to YouTube. You have material. Go to Facebook. Read everything that you hear or you, you see Pastor Markiel Bam Bulwanga. His name is very long. I think my brother will pardon me every now and then. I spell his name wrong, pronounce his name wrong. And Sister Esther, they are doing marvelously well. Besides, you can also listen to... <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Jenny, she, he is Brother Markiel Bam Bulwanga. It's my Facebook friend. I share his messages Go and listen to him. He will really bless you. It's a good brother. Besides that, listen to my messages 24-7. I can only say my product better than any person because nobody might be out witnessing and advertising me 
I do for others, but I don't think, and I don't know if they do for me, and I don't care, provided Christ is being preached. Provided Christ is being preached. Listen to ministers and pastors who are promoting Christ. Be their friends. Support them financially. Support them prayer in a form of prayer. And I believe that when you are saved through their ministry, Christ will be glorified. Father, thank you for this opportunity for us to learn from your word. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you'll be glorified in the hearts of men. As people are listening to this voice, Father, I pray that let it not be my voice. Let you alone be exalted above every other name. May you be glorified now and forever in Jesus' name. I rebuke every power of the devil against any person who will come across these materials. Anything that will cause them to rebel against your will. I stand against them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. If you please read this scripture for me. Second Timothy chapter number 3. Read the verse number 1 to attend the verse number 9. If you find yourself committing any of sin there, written over there, be aware that you have already 666 in your hands and on your forehead, that you must come to Christ, that Christ should remove it before the law will be enforced. Have a nice day. Follow me tomorrow, the same time. We're going to continue life after rapture. God bless you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.